The years-long effort to recall California Governor Gavin Newsom, Mussolini, Patrick Bateman has failed. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff reportedly promised to side with China over the United States in the event of war between the two nations. And the funniest man in the world, who also happened to be one of the wisest people in public life, has died totally unexpectedly. Tough couple days. Even still, all hope is not lost. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment yesterday is from Armando Rivas, who says the only thing Joe Biden united was Americans hating him. Uh, That's true. I I do think, I, I actually think that's true of basically all presidents and kings and dictators and (laughs) any sort of political leader, in a way, their function is to unite people against them. That's usually the effect. But uh, the difference between Biden and some of his predecessors is that he actually deserves it. (laughs) Because look, you've seen what's going on in Afghanistan. You've seen what's going on in immigration. You've seen what's going on, especially in the economy, notably inflation. And when inflation is running crazy, I would strongly recommend you go check out Acre Gold. I know the dilemma. You want to invest in physical gold, but you're not old rich Uncle Pennybags, and so you feel that you cannot come out of pocket and start buying physical gold. But what if I told you you can start investing in physical gold for as little as $30 a month? You lie, Michael. I don't, I don't lie. I don't lie. Calm down, okay? You can do that with Acre. Acre allows you to invest in their gold bars, subscribe to their gold bars, and then when your gold stash reaches the price of their gold bars, they will discreetly ship Acre Gold to your door. They've also got a new $100 a month subscription to a 5-gram gold bar if you want to up the ante. I have really enjoyed investing in physical precious metals. I think it's a, a good investment to make, especially in kind of crazy economic times such as the ones we're living in. I've enjoyed investing in Acre Gold. Right now, go to getacregold.com slash Noel. Start investing in physical gold today. Make sure you go to this URL because Acre is giving away a gold bar. To qualify for the giveaway, tweet or post why you should be the recipient. Mention at get underscore Acre. That's getacregold.com slash Knowles. Thank you, Acre Gold, for supporting the show. The recall effort against Gavin Newsom appears to have failed. I don't think they've officially called the race yet because we've totally upended our election system. So now the counting goes on for days and days and weeks and weeks, and they've got to find new batches of mail-in ballots, and it's all really, really suspect. But from the early numbers, it appears that the recall failed in a landslide. So the insurgent campaign by Larry Elder, who did better than I, I think just about any Republican candidate could have done in California. And he got a lot of support and was, was polling very well in the surveys before election, I was going to say election day, but it's really now election month or so. Uh, he, he really put up a good campaign and yet Gavin Newsom appears to have won. First question I've got for you, do you trust the results? Do you, I, I, tweeted this out. I said, do you trust the results? Overwhelmingly, people said no. That's a different question than, did Gavin Newsom actually win or did he actually get more votes to not be recalled than the the recall vote got? There are different questions. You You can think that even fair and square, the recall failed and also think that it wasn't fair and also think that it wasn't above board and also think there was a lot of fraud. When I asked the question, do you think the election was fair? Do you think it's legit? I'm actually not even asking a question about Gavin Newsom or Larry Elder or Joe Biden or Donald Trump or or anybody like that. I'm asking a question about our form of government. Increasingly in recent years on both sides of the political aisle, people do not trust the integrity of our elections. How, how long did we hear about Russia and the collusion and Trump stole it in 2016? And then in 2020, they upended the entire election system, took away basic safeguards for election integrity. And those measures remained in place during this California recall. Widespread mail-in ballots sent out to people. Sometimes people received multiple ballots. Sometimes people 
dead people received ballots. Sometimes the ballots that people got had holes in them where you could see whether or not they voted for the recall. Uh, You had ballot harvesting in California. You had people, we played it on the show, local news showing up and and they show up to the ballot in the morning and the, the election workers say, oh, you've already voted. And the people say, I haven't already voted. And they say, well, our records show that you have. So it, it's clear that I'm not just talking about individual acts of fraud. I'm saying the whole system does not have integrity. And there, there are always questions about votes, but especially since the ruling class used the coronavirus as an excuse to take away all of our election integrity measures, people, I don't care what side of the aisle you are on, but, es- but especially conservatives, it's, it's a widespread problem, but it's, you know, in particular among conservatives, because we're outside of the ruling class, they just don't have faith in the system. And Gavin Newsom is really upset about that. He says, if you have any questions about how elections are conducted, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Election fraud stuff is a crock. It's shameful. And it's shameful. And I say that, I mean that. As an American, I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm disgusted by it. Stop. Grow up. You. These people literally are vandalizing our democracy and trust in our institutions. I care too much about this nation. I care too much about this country. We're debating democracy in America right now. This big lie, this not, I mean, this insurrection, what the hell's wrong with these folks? Grow up. Accept the results. There's absolutely none. It's, I don't, it's embarrassing to even respond to that because it's a fantasy. They're making stuff up and it's hurting our country. Forget this election. Guys like me come and go. We are a dime a dozen politicians, quite literally a dime a dozen. It's about our institutions, it's about this nation. It's about trust and confidence. It's about who we are. It's about citizens feeling empowered and that their voice matters. It's a hell of a thing. It's a hell of a thing. Do you like Huey Lewis in the news? You know, I think their crowning achievement is hip to be squared, which is not just, no, I don't, I can't, I can't look at that guy without seeing American Psycho. And he is a psycho because he's gaslighting all of us. He's saying, if you, you're attacking our democracy, if you if you criticize us for removing all of the election integrity measures that defend our democracy, I mean, look, this guy is a crook machine politician. He's tied into the ruling families of California. I don't think the election was conducted fairly. I think probably the ele- the recall wouldn't have worked even if the election were conducted fairly. Okay, I'm not I'm not saying that that. Uh, actually a, a huge avalanche of voters voted to throw out Gavin Newsom. And there was a massive, you know, 70% California support for Larry Elder and the ruling class held it in. I'm not saying that. I think probably the recall would have failed anyway, just how the voter registration works in California. But here's what I do know. The election was not conducted fairly. When you have widespread mail-ins, it's not fair. When you have holes in your ballot envelopes, it's not fair. When you have motor voter laws and ballot harvesting, it's not fair. When you have people showing up to vote and they're told they they already voted, it's not fair. Okay, this guy is a crook. His political party is cheating and and the ruling class is extremely corrupt and people are absolutely right not to have faith in those institutions or those elections. It's not the fault of the people. It's your fault, Gavin Newsom, and it's your fault, Nancy Pelosi, and it's your fault, crooked ruling class. And, and what's so offensive on top of it is not just that you're destroying our constitutional order, it's that you're lying to us about it and, and you're gaslighting us while you do it. That's the pro- that is what is shameful, I think. That is what is shameful. But I, I have said from the beginning, the, the idea that the recall effort would work even if it were a totally fair election, was, was slim. Is there, did Larry Elder do better than we all thought he would? or than, than the ruling class and the Democrats thought he would? Yes, he did. But, but the, the problems in California are structural and the problems in California are also just, just numbers games. The number of Democrats vastly, vastly outnumbers the number of Republicans. Beyond California, the, the, the ruling class is so hollowing out our constitutional order that you now have the nation's top general According to a new report from Bob Woodward, you have the nation's top general colluding with our our country's number one geopolitical rival, our number one enemy in the event that we go to war. So according to the Washington Post, take it with a grain of salt. According to Bob Woodward, take him with a grain of salt. General Milley, in a pair of secret phone calls, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, 
called his counterpart, G- General Li Zhuocheng of the People's Liberation Ar- Army, and said that the United States would not strike China, even if President Trump gave the order. The first call took place, uh, the first call that we know about took place on October 30th. So this is before the presidential election. The second call took place on January 8th. This is after the presidential election, after the, the insurrection, the greatest coup d'etat in American history. These two phone calls involved Milley saying, quote, General Lee, I want to assure you that the American government is stable and everything is going to be okay. We are not going to attack or conduct any kinetic operations against you. In the second call, he said, we are 100% steady. Everything's fine. Democracy can be sloppy sometimes. The message being, don't worry, don't worry. Even if the president gives the order, we're not going to go to war with China. I have tried to be as fair about these issues as I possibly can. And I say, well, you know, the politics is messy. So as General Milley says, politics is messy sometimes. Whenever you hear conservatives calling to use the Logan Act or some obscure provision of the law to accuse people of treason and try people for calling foreign dignitaries or something, I always tamp that down. I say, that's actually not how it works. This law really hasn't been used against people. In this case, I, I think this man should should probably be investigated and tried for a crime. It it seems that what he's doing is tantamount to treason. He's calling our number one enemy and saying, don't worry, we're not going to attack you. He further said that if Donald Trump does give the order, he'll call and give a warning to the Chinese. That is, if not treason outright, it's certainly conspiracy to commit treason. And it it is not enough that this, obviously he should resign, that goes, or be fired, that goes without saying. But I think this goes further. We all joke, you know, lock her up or lock him up or this or that. And I generally don't think we should jail our our presidential candidates. This guy should face very serious consequences. He is compromising civilian control of the military. This is a, a key provision of our constitutional republic. So many other aspects of our constitutional order have been destroyed by our sick, psychotic ruling class and psychopathic, I should say, ruling class. This is probably the most dangerous of all. Throw the book at him. Marco Rubio is calling for Milley to resign, chairman of the Joint Chiefs. He's saying, quote, I write with grave concern regarding recent reporting that General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, worked to actively undermine the sitting commander-in-chief of the United States Armed Forces and contemplated a treasonous leak of classified information to the Chinese Communist Party in advance of a potential armed conflict with the People's Republic of China. These actions by General Milley demonstrate a clear lack of sound judgment, and I urge you to dismiss immediately. Sure, I just think that's too good. Uh, yeah, I agree with Rubio. He, he should be fired immediately, but, but that's too good. There, there needs to be a stiffer consequence here. Who's running the country? Who gets to run the country? You hear the left prattle on and on and on and on about our democracy and the threats to our democracy. They are the chief aggressors against our democracy. Within the country, the Democrats, the the ruling class are the chief antagonists of our democracy. You see it all the time. We talked about this on the show last week. We need our democracy, but if the people of Texas vote not to kill babies, we've got to undermine that. We have our democracy unless the people vote for Donald Trump, as they did, and then we have to undermine that. Our democracy, we we need to support our democracy, and that's why we need to replace our commander-in-chief with some careerist military woke idiot who's now going to collude with our number one enemy. Disgusting stuff. It's not, this is not just right-wing angst against Milley. Even Vindman, remember Vindman, I'm sorry, Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, Alexander Vindman, he was this lib, uh, disgruntled, really annoying <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman. And he came out and he, he was really active in opposing Trump. He just said, this is outrageous and Milley must resign. He says, quote, if this report is true, General Milley must resign. He usurped civilian authority, broke chain of command, and violated the sacrosanct principle of civilian control over the military. It's an extremely dangerous precedent. You can't simply walk away from that hashtag, do the right thing in the right way. I can't believe I'm saying this general, general, Lieutenant Colonel, how could I forget his title, Vindman, is correct. Now, the the key here is, if this is true, if this is, we don't know if this is true or not. 
especially because it comes from the Washington Post, especially because it comes from this lib book by Bob Woodward. However, as I have pointed out on the show before, when reports come out in the establishment media against establishment figures, against the left or against the Democrats, they are more credible than when reports come out in the establishment media against the right. The reason for this is that the media are on the same side as the establishment. They're the same thing. So when they're making some sort of report about it, they have one, more credibility, and, and two, actually more access to the people who are involved. Whereas, because the media and the right are in total opposition, because the media are the enemy, they're, they're the opponent, then the reports are, are often less, much less credible. And you th- the Russia gate, the Ukraine phone call, the, the Moscow urine tape, you remember that? Remember that nonsense for a while? So th- that's just not as, as credible. Is, is this report correct? I don't know. That's why we need to have an investigation. We're seeing a real upending of our constitution here. Okay. And it's, it's by people who are not elected. The people who are claiming to defend our democracy are the people who are, who are in a, in practice undermining our democracy, notably Dr. Fauci. So Dr. Fauci is coming out now and, and discussing how much longer the, the 15 days to slow the spread is going to go. So he was asked, not that long ago, just a few days ago, on the Joy Reid show on MSNBC, will there be a new monster variant that forces us all to lock down again? That's why we need to mandate the vaccines to stop. Is, are we headed for the very, very worst of the pandemic that's going to go on interminably? Fauci says no. I've been likening it to like the movie Alien, right? Where it's one kind of alien, then it morphs into another kind, and then another kind, and they just get more powerful as they morph using the human body as a host, right? So it's the same thing. I worry that we're on Moo already. I mean, Lambda I was worried about. Now we're on Moo. We're just going down the Greek alphabet. By the time, you know, we get to Omega, I worry it'll be unbeatable. Are you worried that we're going to have a nightmare this winter as these variants continue to evolve are we getting close to one that can beat all of our vaccines? Well, I'm not saying we're close to that, Joy. I, I, I think that would be a stretch to say that. All right. I'm, I'm always glad when Dr. Fauci weighs in as the voice of reason on, to the left and says, no, listen, your hysterical claims, they're, they're a little too much even for me. The problem with Fauci, though, is that he holds both sides of every single opinion, and he has for decades. So then he goes back on the same channel, MSNBC. He's being interviewed by Joe Scarborough's girlfriend, I think now wife, and who, who Donald Trump very famously had a big problem with. And uh, this newscaster, Mika Brzezinski, asks him more or less the same question. And Joe decides, in, or, or Fauci decides instead, not to tamp down the hysteria, but actually to turn it up. What is the potential that this spirals beyond Delta to monster variant? Well, there's always a risk of, as you get more circulation of virus in the community, that you'll get enough accumulation of new mutations to get a variant that is functionally different than the ones we're seeing now. You're vaccinating now to prevent the next Mm -hmm. mutant coming, the next variant from coming. And again, that's yet again another reason besides protecting the health of the people who are getting vaccinated, protecting the community, you don't want to see more variants come in because then it would, in many respects, uh, negate some of the very positive protection that you get from the vaccine. So you, do you notice how the argument has evolved here from, well, let's go all the way back to the beginning. 15 days to slow the spread, then it was flatten the curve, then it was find a cure, then we found a cure, then it was distribute the vaccines, then it was get vaccinated, to protect yourself. Then it was get vaccinated to protect everybody else. But I thought the vaccine was supposed to provide the safe, effective protection against severe illness from the coronavirus to you, to the recipient. So then that became a little confused. Now it's get vaccinated, not so much to protect yourself or even to protect other people, but to protect the future people who may or may not be vaccinated against the Lambda and the Sigma and the Mu and the Mao and the Phi Beta Kappa. It just goes on and on and on. There's no end to that. And uh, so long as Dr. Fauci gets to call the shots and so long as Dr. Fauci gets to go on TV and run the country, there, there never is going to be any end to that, which is why he's going to keep 
turning it up. You're going to, if you go back, perhaps we should do a series on this. If you go back and look at how Dr. Fauci has evolved his positions over the course of coronavirus, you'll notice that the, the through line here is, no, we would never do that crazy radical thing that's not yet popular. We wouldn't do it. Well, maybe we have to do it. We're doing it. And if you don't do it, you hate science and you hate your fellow Americans. And then he moves on. No, we would never do this other radical thing. Well, maybe we would. Yes, you absolutely have to do it. And he goes on and on and on and on. And he rarely gets called out for it. He only gets called out basically on, on this show, on the right generally, never from the establishment, and people move along with it. Now, after we were told no vaccine mandates by Fauci, by Joe Biden, we were told not only will there not be vaccine mandates, but vaccine mandates would be an encroachment on people's liberty. Then we were told, yes, there will be va- ma- vaccine mandates. I am mandating that you get the vaccine. Now Joe Biden's Commerce Secretary is going out after the announcement for the vaccine mandates and denying that there are mandates at all. I'm puzzled by these people who continue to say they're forced to get vaccinated here. There's always been a choice. If you do not want to get vaccinated, you can work from home. You can homeschool your children. You can shop online. So where is this coming from? People saying I'm now being forced to be vaccinated. We never forced vaccinations on kids in school. If you didn't want to vaccinate your kids, you could homeschool them. And people have done it for years. You're exactly right. Nobody is being forced. In fact, if you don't get vaccinated, you just have to get tested on a weekly basis. But the reality is the science is crystal clear on this. Get it. Get vaccinated. These vaccines are incredibly effective. They're effective. They are free. They work. And we just it's unacceptable. It is unacceptable now that people aren't getting vaccinated. We need our kids in schools. We need the schools open. We need people to get back to work. So notice what she she says. The science is incredibly clear. We need people back in schools. We need people to go to work. We need people to do this. Those aren't scientific questions, right? Those are political questions, first of all. But then look at the weasel words. She says, look, there is no mandate. You can always just get a test. You can always get a test. Tests are not free. Tests are kind of expensive sometimes. Even let's say you're just paying 25, 30 bucks a test. Let's say you're a family of four. Let's say you got to get a test once a week, twice a week. That's going to add up a lot. You, no one needs to get a mandate or get, get a vaccine. You just need the vaccine or the constant tests if you want to shop or sell or work or travel or get on an airplane or do anything. That's the only time you need a test. Otherwise, you're, otherwise you're fine. We're not mandating anything at all. The pressure campaign, <laughs> the pressure campaign is so vicious because not only are they mandating it, but they're hiding the fact that they're mandating it. If you want to just see directly into what you need, how you can get it, how you can get it cheaply, I would strongly recommend you check out Rock Auto. When was the last time you went to the brick and mortar car parts store? You, do you remember? You probably, you might not even remember this. You show up, First, you got to drive there. It takes a while. Then you got to walk in. Then you got to wait in line. You wait in line for a little while. You get up to the counter. You say, okay, I need, I need this part for my car. The guy peppers you with a thousand questions, the make, the model, the color, the this, the that. You might, know, might or might not know the answer to those questions. Then he looks in the back and they don't have the part. There's too many parts. There's too many cars these days. There's too many parts. He goes online, probably to rockauto.com, orders the part. You've got to wait a while and then you got to pay twice as much. Or, or, just hear me out. Go to rockauto.com. All right, family business, they've got reliably low prices for pros and do-it-yourselfers. It's not a bunch of gimmicks. It's not a bunch of log in on Tuesday morning and save 10% and then Wednesday it's 15% or whatever. It's none of that. It's always reliably low. They got all the parts you need. The catalog's so easy to navigate. Even I can do it. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. And they're right, Knowles, Kenna W-L-E-S, in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. And speaking of vaccine mandates, you know where the Daily Wire is on this, okay? We just said no. No, no Gina Raimondo, Commerce Secretary. There is a, you are obviously are mandating this. No Joe Biden, you're mandating it. And if we don't go along with it, for instance, if we don't go along with the em- employee vaccination mandate and testing, we could face a, a fine of up to $14,000 for each violation, which is why the Daily Wire is calling on everyone who's listening to help us fight this obscene tyrannical mandate. Go to dailywire.com slash subscribe. Use code do not comply at checkout for 25% off. We appreciate it. 
that you stand with us here at The Daily Wire. Most importantly, stand with the rights of all Americans. We'll be right back with a lot more. The people who say they defend our democracy are the people most likely to undermine our democracy. The people who pretend to be the radicals overthrowing the system are the people who are most likely to defend and entrench the system in place. It's ironic. You can see it play out right now in a debate happening between Nicki Minaj and Joy Reid. You know, a meeting of the great philosophers of our era. Nicki Minaj is right here. Joy Reid is not right here, but you're going to see, Joy Reid is very rarely right, but you're going to see not just that one side is right and one side is wrong. And it's, it's not a battle really between the conservatives and the left or the left and the right or anything like that. It's between the outsiders and the ruling class, the, the entrenched power versus the people. Nicki Minaj tweets out, they want you to get vaccinated for the Met Gala. If I get vaccinated, it won't be for the Met Gala. It'll be once I feel I've done enough research. I'm working on that now. In the meantime, my loves, be safe. Wear a mask with two strings that grip your hand and face, grip your head and face, not that loose one. So she's saying, wear the mask. I'm going along with a lot of this, but I'm a little skeptical of this hastily developed drug that we've been hearing some weird stuff about. Then she goes on to give a little anecdote. She goes, and this is graphic, so you know, maybe close your ears for 10 seconds if you need to. My cousin in Trinidad won't get the vaccine because his friend got it and became impotent. His testicles became swollen. His friend was weeks away from getting married. Now the girl called off the wedding. So just pray on it and make sure you're comfortable with your decision, not bullied. Well, man, if anything is going to convince you not to get the vaccine, it will be that. So she's giving this anecdote, but even beyond this one anecdote, We've all heard these stories and the CDC and the FDA have actually acknowledged a number of these stories of of perfectly young, healthy people getting myocarditis. There was a 13 year old who died a few days after he received the second vaccine of heart inflammation. He was otherwise totally healthy. There have been people who died of blood clots after getting the vaccine that were related to the vaccine. There are people who have gotten nerve disorders from the vaccines. These things actually have happened. Joy Reid on MSNBC furiously responds. People like Nicki Minaj, I have to say this. You have a platform, sister, that is 22 million followers. Okay, I have 2 million followers. You have 22 million followers on Twitter. For you to use your platform to encourage our community to not protect themselves and save their lives, my God, sister, you could do better than that. You got that platform. It's it's a blessing. It's a blessing that you got that, that people listen to you, and they listen to you more than they listen to me. For you to use your platform to put people in the position of dying from a disease they don't have to die from, oh my God, as a fan, as a hip hop fan, as somebody who was your fan, I'm so sad that you did that. So sad that you did that, sister. So Joy Reid is engaging in what is called concern trolling. This, this is not the kind of trolling where you just attack somebody outright. This is the kind of trolling where you pretend to be on the person's side, but you're actually opposing everything that they're doing. And you're trying to say, oh, look, man, I'm a big fan of yours. Oh, I just think I love you. Oh, I love your music and you're so great. And so I'm just, I'm really sad that you're, that you're contradicting the establishment narrative. I'm just, it really concerns me that you are stepping out of line from the ruling classes narrative, Nicki Minaj. I'm just, because I'm a big fan of yours. So what does Nicki Minaj do? Does she say, oh, well, okay, I'm sorry, Joy. You're right. I shouldn't have stepped out of line. Maybe next time, maybe you should get the vaccine. No, she doesn't do any of that. She says, quote, This is what happens when you're so thirsty to down another black woman by the request of the white man that you didn't bother to read all my tweets. My God, sister, do better. Imagine getting your dumb derriere on TV a minute after a tweet to spread a false narrative about a black woman. The two white men sitting there nodding their heads because this Uncle Tamiana doing the work child. How sad. (laughs) I love it. I love it. I know that she's going after white people here and that's, I don't think that's good. I think that's bad for white people and I think it's bad for swarthy people and I think it's bad for the country in general. But take it from Nicki Minaj's perspective here. If you, the, the way that she is using the white man here is I think synonymous with the ruling class. 
Okay, I think the the wish the man. You know, you ever hear about the man? All the man, the man's getting me down, or the white man is. You know, the, I think she's using this expression not not to express her hatred for white people in general. Maybe she hates white people too. I don't know, but I think she's using it to say, not you are a black shill for white people, but you are a shill for the ruling power, the ruling class. Now, the fact the fact is the the ruling class is not presently defined by race or sex, not the white man. It's the blob, right? It's it's what we were talking about. It's the, we call it the liberal establishment, call it whatever you want. And if you read Nicki Minaj's tweet, as I think you should in that way, she's completely right. She says, this is what happens when you're so thirsty to attack another black woman. She's saying, look, we, we're supposed to be on the same side here. We're out of the power structure. Except Joy Reid's not out of the power structure. She's within the, she works for corporate media and sh- her job is to push the propaganda of the liberal establishment. You're doing this at the request of the establishment. You're spreading a false narrative about, you're coming after me who you have something in common with, but you're doing it because you've sold out to the establishment. This, I think, is absolutely right. This is what AOC did, too. When AOC shows up to the Met Gala, to the fancy party with all her extremely rich friends, where no one's wearing a mask and no one's following their own rules, other than the staff, other than the filthy, dirty help, so they don't spread their germs to the good rich people, and she wears a dress and it says, ha <laughs> tax the rich. She is, she is doing what I accuse the squishy conservatives of doing. You know, I call those squishy conservatives the court jesters in the kingdom of liberalism. Well, AOC is the same thing. She's the same thing for the left. She is performing this role as a radical leftist revolutionary. She is doing nothing but propping up the capitalistic liberal establishment plutocracy. That's that's her job. She She is a court jester for the radical left. And she puts on a show and she's supposed to get all the leftists really riled up, but her, her job really is to preserve the establishment. That's why she's partying with people at the Met Gala. When we talk about people on the right, who are the sort of conservatives who go on the liberal channels, and they say, well, I'm a conservative, but I would never support Donald Trump. I'm a conservative, but I would never support pro-life laws. I'm a conservative, but I would never support borders and immigration controls. I'm a conservative, but I would never support you know, anything that's actually conservative. They are court jesters on the right, and AOC and Joy Reid are court jesters on the left. Their job is to put up just enough of a fight to give the radical leftists the feeling that they can really completely overthrow the the broad liberal establishment, which is not opposed to the big corporations, but is actually part of the big corporations. In fact, though, when when those corporate globalist establishmentarian masters come down and say, hey, hey, Joy Reid, hey, AOC, hey, people that we permit to have some power in this system, get in line and get the rest of your people in line too. What do they do? They do it. Hey, Joy Reid, hey, AOC, jump. How high? How high, corporate overlords? And Nicki Minaj isn't going to do that. I have a great, even though Nicki Minaj is just coming out very strongly against white men in this, in this tweet, which is not great. Uh, I do at least appreciate the place that she's doing it from. It's a recognition of the real political power and the real role of these make-believe radicals on MSNBC or in the halls of Congress like AOC. Where is the radicalism? Megan Rapino, she's that soccer player, I guess. She's that soccer player who hates America and she's very performatively lesbian. She went to the Met Gala. And she wore, or she carried with herself a clutch purse that says, in gay, we trust, right? Not in God, we trust, in gay, we trust, because her God is sexual desire and radicalism and subversion and the overthrow of traditional order, I suppose, right? The whole point of it is the subversion of an ordinary American slogan. And this is supposed to be revolutionary, except, except she's doing it at the Met Gala, except she's doing it with the richest, most entrenched, most establishmentarian people in the entire country. She thinks she's upending the, the American religion is Christianity and she's going to upend it and make it this religion about sexual desire. No, no, no. Her, her version, the LGBT, the rainbow flag, the pride, the progress, that is the established church. That is the official religion. If I showed up to the Met Gala 
in a dress, I, that, that would be fine. They would be, that would be totally normal. But if I showed up in a dress or with a clutch purse that said, stop killing babies, or uh, I don't know, even on, uh, you could go even further on that line, Down syndrome lives, stop killing people with Down syndrome, which, which the left openly advocates doing, doing so in the womb. I would be escorted out by security. I would never get in the door because that would be a genuinely radical slogan. That would be a genuinely revolutionary slogan. If, if I wore a, a costume into the Met Gala that said, we need election integrity to make sure that every vote counts, defend election integrity laws, I would be escorted out because the ruling class doesn't want any of that stuff. The ruling class wants the bread and the circuses of the Megan Rapino and the AOC and the Joy Reid and they want, they, they want to keep the show going while they rule the country. That, that, is, that is the established church that we're living in right now, because all human conflict ultimately is theological. Speaking of radical churches, the Evangelical Lutheran Church, the ELCA, has just installed its first transgender bishop. I'm going to need to use a lot of quotes here. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in America has just installed its first transgender bishop. Uh, we covered this back when it was starting to bubble up in the, uh, the news cycle a while ago. Uh, at Grace Cathedral in San Francisco, with 65 bishops and 150 pastors in attendance, Bishop Megan Rohrer will lead the Sacramento-based Sierra Pacific Synod with 200 congregations. Uh, congregations. The 41-year-old woman now uses the pronouns he and they, and hold on, it gets weirder, is married to a wife named Laurel. And the couple has two children has to, how, I don't, I don't know. None of this makes any sense. None of this is real. What you are witnessing here is not just the destruction of marriage and sex and the church. You're seeing the destruction of the English language because this is a bunch of gobbledygook that doesn't mean anything. And we're we're not, because of our I suppose in part because we have a respect for a pluralistic society, but then we've taken that to a radical, radical extreme of skepticism. We're not allowed to point out that this is not really a church. This woman is not really a bishop and this woman is not really a man. We're not allowed to point any, and this, this woman is not really the husband <laughs> to her wife with none of, none of that is true. This is a lesbian who is playing make-believe at religion to promote the, the, her true religion, which is the religion of progressivism. This is the destruction of the institution. We're seeing the destruction of, of church institutions, the destruction of public health institutions. We're seeing the destruction of military institutions. Thank you, General Mattis. We're seeing the, the collapse of basically all of the institutions of public life. We no longer even have faith in our elections, whether the elections in California, whether the election is nationwide, whether it's the Democrat who wins, whether it's the Republican who wins. We no longer have faith in those institutions. That's not the fault of the people. It's the fault of the people who ran the institutions into the ground. Speaking of institutions mattering, there's a woman who's up for a a judge, judgeship on the ninth circuit. Uh, This is a Biden nominee and Senator Cruz has some questions for her. Ms. Sung, Do you believe Justice Kavanaugh is intellectually and morally bankrupt? Senator, I would want every Supreme Court justice to know, including Justice Kavanaugh, that I respect completely their authority as a Supreme Court justice. I never would follow their precedents without reservation. you're, You're an experienced lawyer. You know when someone's not answering a question. My question was simple and straightforward. Do you believe Justice Kavanaugh is, quote, intellectually and morally bankrupt? Thank you for the question, Senator. As I stated earlier, I recognize that that statement was overheated rhetoric, and that's all that it was. So (laughs) correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not as uh, trained a lawyer as uh, Senator Cruz here or as this nominee is. 
But it sounds like she didn't answer the question again. So she comes out and she says, this was some time ago. She says, uh, Brett Kavanaugh is intellectually and morally bankrupt. This wasn't it wasn't that long. This wasn't 10 years ago. This was, you know, within the last few years. And Cruz says, okay, so do you believe that? And if you do not believe that, were you lying then or are you lying now? Where is your credibility? Because you told us, it, you made a very forceful statement about it, now a member of the Supreme Court, not that, not all that long ago. So what is it? Are you a liar? Do you have any integrity? Joe Biden's judicial nominee, Ninth Circuit Court, cannot answer Simple questions from Senator Cruz. I'm going to try one more time because you signed your name to it and it wasn't year, decades ago. It was, it was very recently. You signed your name to this statement. I'm asking simply today, do you believe that Justice Kavanaugh is, quote, intellectually and morally bankrupt? You signed your name to that proposition. Do you still believe it? Thank you for the question, Senator. As I stated that was rhetorical advocacy only that I signed strictly in my personal capacity as a private citizen addressing my alma mater. That was rhetorical advocacy that, that was overheated and does not represent her view. So hold on, hold on, let me try to make sense of it. Rhetorical advocacy is when you use words to make a point and in this case, she's admitting she used words to make a point, but she didn't believe in those. Oh, she lied. Oh, you lied. That was a lie. Okay. She's saying, yes, when I signed my name to that statement, not that long ago, I was a liar. That's what I said about Brett Kavanaugh then, but n- now I don't believe it. So the question, of course, is if you were willing to lie very publicly, not that long ago, What's to say you're not lying right now to me? And the answer is nothing because this woman has no integrity and it doesn't matter. She'll probably get through because our institutions have very little integrity these days. And, and then the institutionalists and the establishmentarians want to blame all of us and call us insurrectionists and call us terrorists and threats to, to the United States and our democracy because we have questions about the way that these people have lied to us and continue to lie to us day by day by day and even lied to us about lying to us. Speaking of these mealy-mouthed words, poor besieged Secretary of State Antony Blinken was asked another simple question. Question is, quote, is it true that that, uh, Vladimir Putin threatened the United States? This is, uh, there were some reports about this. So he goes, is that true? Did that really happen? Did he threaten Joe Biden? Blinken, gives a similar sort of answer to that judge. Is it true that President Putin threatened the President of the United States saying he could not build intelligence capabilities in the region? Um, this, is an, this is an important question and one that in its detail and substance, I think we need to take up uh, in another setting for reasons I know that you, you very much appreciate. This is a very important question, and uh, I think we certainly need to take it up. And uh, yes, we should do it uh, when it's off the record so that I don't need to actually give an answer on this. Such weakness. <laughs> Did Vladimir Putin threaten the United States that if we try to interfere anymore in Afghanistan and the region, that they're, they're going to hit us, they're going to attack us, they're going to retaliate? Did that happen? Why aren't we hearing about this? Why aren't we doing something about this? Why isn't General Milley calling China and and selling American intelligence? Why, 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 why? Because it would seem to me that the way that we are told our government works in Schoolhouse Rock, I'm a bill and up on Capitol Hill, is not the way our government actually works. And if the past few years have done anything, it's, it's woken us up to that fact. And it's made us question, well, hold on, wait, the top general, the top military commander in America is reportedly offering to give extraordinarily classified information to the Chinese government by undermining his own president. And wait, hold, what? What? Wait, are people don't have any faith in our elections anymore? What? Ah, yikes. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. And then the cherry on top of this difficult day Sunday 
The funniest man in the world just died, Norm MacDonald. I know there are a lot of Norm MacDonald fans out there. I was going to play a clip from Norm today, and I couldn't pick just one. I couldn't. His, his work is so good. I've, I've read his book based on a true story three times. We've all watched his videos, you know, many, many, many times. You could go down a YouTube rabbit hole and be there for days. Uh, so I, I did just want to give a little personal insight. I wish that I could say that Norm MacDonald and I were best friends. That would be incredible. But I, you know, I, unfortunately, I can't say that. Um, however, we, we did have a very lengthy correspondence a couple of years ago. I noticed when Norm MacDonald got onto Twitter, he followed me. I was one of the first people he followed on Twitter. And I was, I was really shocked by this. And I thought, like, I, you know, I never messaged him. I was so in awe of the guy. I didn't want to abuse the fact that he was, he was following me. And, uh, but then one, one time he tweeted something about some pain that he was in. And so I did reach out. I, I didn't know if he was depressed or suicidal even. Now, in retrospect, we see he was going through cancer treatments. He, he suffered silently, privately from cancer. He fought cancer for nine years, didn't tell anyone, apparently not even much of his family, if any of his family. And so I, re- I reached out to him and I said, hey, you know, if you want to talk about anything, just let me know. And this led to a weeks and weeks long correspondence where we would write each other basically these essays every night, these very long letters every night. And it was mostly on the topic of religion, which you, and I, I, you could never tell if he was making a joke or something. He would sometimes talk about religion publicly, but he would, it would usually be in the form of a joke. He'd say, I'm a Christian, you know, and someone, the, the other comedian would say, you're a Christian. He's like, yeah, you know, I protest military funerals, you know, yeah, like the Westboro church or something. And, and say, okay, well, I don't know if he really is. All I will say, I don't want to reveal too much about our private correspondence, certainly not, not now. Uh, but the, the thing you noticed about Norm was that he was one of the wisest people, most intelligent people around. He would, he would say these things like, you know, Michael, man, you're really educated, man. You're really intelligent. Me, I'm just an old chunk of coal. You know, I, I'm not educated at all. And then he would use some word that I'd never heard before. And you could tell he had this deep, deep knowledge of literature and history and, and philosophy and all of these things. And uh, we, we got into this very serious conversation about religion. And the one comfort that I, and the reason I, I even mention this today is comfort for all the many, many fans he had out there. I am quite certain that he had obviously a profound humility and a deep and abiding faith. I am quite certain of that. And obviously a great deal of fortitude, which is another virtue, which is really missing in our culture today. When was the last time someone suffered privately and died privately and didn't make a big spectacle of himself and didn't become a victim and just fought his struggles and carried his cross silently? Uh, it's a, a horrible loss to the world that he is gone, uh, but he remains a great uh, inspiration to a lot of people, and he left behind a great body of work, and I strongly recommend you all check out his book, Based on a True Story. Cheers to uh, Norm MacDonald, one of the greats. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. See you tomorrow. The Michael Knowles Show is produced by Ben Davies. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Our technical director is Austin Stevens. Supervising producer, Mathis Glover. Production manager, Pavel Vidovsky. Editor and associate producer, Danny D'Amico. Associate producer, Justine Turley. Audio mixer, Mike Coromina. And hair and makeup by Nika Geneva. The Michael Knowles Show is a Daily Wire production. Copyright Daily Wire 2021. On The Matt Wall Show, we talk about the things that matter. Real issues that affect you, your family, our country. Not just politics, but culture, faith, current events. All the fundamentals. If they matter to you, come check out the show. 